In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate secondary port tidal heights. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's, let's assume we're going to use Tymouth as our uh, port. So Tymouth is a secondary port and we don't have tidal information for Tymouth. We only have standard port information with high water and low water times and depths for Plymouth, which is the um, associated standard port, as you can see there. So what we need to find is the tidal information for Plymouth for the day that we want. And then we need to apply the differences uh, for Tymouth to give us the time and depths in Tymouth. Okay, so we're going to use the more accurate tidal flow curve and also the, uh, high, uh, the high and low water times and depths for Plymouth, which is a well-surveyed port. Once we've got that information, we're going to apply the differences to time and to depth for time math. Okay, so that is a secondary port calculation. So first of all, what we've got to do is find the standard port information for Plymouth, which is a little arrow there, which told us to go to the left. So that's Dartmouth. So let's keep going. Okay, Plymouth, there we go. So um, let's, let's choose a date. We'll say the 22nd of March, 2020. So you can see that we've got a high water and low water time for uh, there's two, uh, obviously, in the 24 hour period. So the first high water is at 0436. That's UT because it's in a shaded area on the Almanac and the Almanac tells us in a shaded area it's UT. The unshaded areas, there's a UT time. We need to add one hour for British summertime, but we're in a shaded area, so it's always UT. OK. So we've got, uh, let's use the high water, the second high water. Assume we're getting to Tymouth in the afternoon, evening. And we need to know the tidal information for the afternoon and evening for Tymouth. So we're going to use 1703 UT as the high water, 4.9 metres. OK, so that's the relevant information we need. The following low water is 1.1 metres at um, 23.25. So what we're going to do is use that information and we'll go back to Tymouth and we'll find we've got the differences here, both for Tymouth New Quay and uh, Tymouth Approaches. So we'll use Tymouth Approaches. We could use either, depending on what the information was we needed. But let's assume it's Tymouth Approaches that we want. And we can see you've got high water and low water times there in columns. So what we look at, we look at the high water. We're doing high water first. So let's look at high water. Uh, we had a, uh, so was it 1702, I think it was, wasn't it? 1702 was our time, uh, high water time. And 1700 is between 1300 and 1800. Okay, so we've got 1300 and 1800 there. So between 1300 and 1800, the difference will be plus 20 minutes to plus 50 minutes. So it's important that if it was... If it was between 1800 and 0, 100, then it would be 1800 to 0, 100, and it would be plus 50 minutes to plus 20 minutes. It's important that you get the, the scales the right way round, and I'll illustrate this in a minute. So first of all, we're going to set the high water time and depth for time math. Okay, so there's the information. Then we've got... High water depth there for springs and neeps between 4.4 and 5.5. So um, first of all, let's have a quick look at the information that we've got. So it's the 22nd of March, 2020. Um, and we're going to transcribe information from the Plymouth Standard Port tidal table. So it's 1703, 4.9 metres high water. Low water following that was 23.25, and that was 1.1 metres. So the shaded area we've already established um, is always in UT. So we don't need to adjust by adding an hour for those times. We've got UT Plymouth, and in any event, we would do that adjustment at the end. Okay. 
So then looking at time math itself, we've got our 20 minutes plus 20 and plus 50 and 1300 and 1800. So making sure we get those the right way around, we can use uh, a little bit of, um, that's the information there, we can use a little bit of a graphic scale to um, to help us rather than doing the maths. You could, if you're particularly good at maths, and you could work out the maths in your head, and sometimes you can do that easily. But in this instance, we're going to use uh, just a bit of paper, and we're going to draw two scales on the paper. The two lines should be, a, the X and Y, um, X and Y axis should be at about 30 degrees. It doesn't have to be measured, but roughly 30 degrees. And then we're going to try and keep the scale pretty much the same. Again, you don't need to measure it out if you can keep it roughly the, to the right scale. And we're going to put zero, uh, plus 20 minutes and 1300 at one end of the scale. Then we're going to go up the time scale, 1300, 1400, 1500, 1600. 1700, 1800. Okay, and then using the same sort of scale, we're going to mark down the x axis, and that's our differences. So, the differences are from 20 to 50, which is 30 minutes, and we've got five different stages, so that's six a change of six every, every uh, part of the scale. Okay, so it's 20, 26, 32, 38, 42, and 50. Then we're going to connect 50 and 1800, which is the difference at 1800. We know that 50, 50 minutes was the difference at 1800. And then we're gonna come down that scale. Um, we can see we've got 1700, 1703 is high water Plymouth. So we mark that on the scale there, 1703, there or thereabouts. Then we're gonna bring a straight edge down that line that we made. That gives us our correct ratio score it across and you can see 42 so plus 42 minutes so high water plymouth is 1703 and therefore adding 42 minutes to that plus 42 must mean that high water tamemouth or timemouth is 1745 and that's ut again okay so we've got a high water time for our tidal curve for timemouth high water depth 4.9 meters <clears throat> we do another scale with a 30 degree difference between x and y and we can see we've got 5.5 and 4.4 as the high water spring and high water neap tidal heights okay and the difference is minus 0.9 of a meter at 5.5 and minus 0.8 of a meter at 4.4 so again making sure we get the scales the right way around so that minus 0.8 and 4.4 are at one end of the scale and and 5.5 and minus 0.9 are at the other end of the scale so we're just going to draw that in so i've drawn down one scale there i've just i've got a 5.6 so that's just one more and then we're going to draw in the difference now you can see the difference here it's only actually 10 centimeters isn't it 0.1 of a meter so the reality is you don't really need to do this maths but let's do the maths anyway just to show you how it's done or using the scale to interpolate and we start at we started at 4.4 so we start at minus 0.8 and we go to minus 0.9 and minus 0.9 and 5.5 okay so let's draw those together and then we're going to come down that straight edge again to 4.9 which was what we had for today in high water okay get to 4.9 draw that line in 0.85 so it's about halfway between minus 0.8 and minus 0.9 okay so if that was a bigger difference you might need to use this but you can see there we're talking centimeters so let's let's say 4.9 minus 0.85 so let's let's say four meters so We've got a high water of four meters at Tynemouth on the 22nd of March, 2020. So we've now got a high water time for Tynemouth. We've got a high water depth for Tynemouth. So we now need a low water depth for Tynemouth. And again, we've only got minus 20 centimeters or minus 10 centimeters. 
between the two low waters, between low water neaps and low water springs. So we could again do the same thing again, but because we're talking there about 10 centimeters, it's nothing, is it? Okay, so we've basically got um, a high water time now, adjusted using our differences for time math. Um, so that was 1745 UT. So that we can put that high water time into our tidal curve. Uh, the tidal curve we're using is for the standard port, and the standard port is Plymouth. So we can cross out Plymouth with a pencil and put in time math and then put in high water for that day, which is 1745. And then we can go plus and minus that by an hour so that we've got a full sort of 12 hours or so of, of uh, tidal information around that high water time. Then we need to put in the high water and low water depths for that tidal um, period. So we've calculated using the differences table again that high water for time math is four meters and low water for time math, we knew it was a very small, it was between um, minus 20 centimetres and minus 10 centimetres. Um, if you do the calculation, it's about halfway between, that's minus 15 centimetres. Okay, so low water was 1.1 metres, minus 15 centimetres, 95 centimetres, let's say a metre. So we've got a metre of water of meter of tide low water in Tymouth on the uh, date we're talking about and we've got four meters of high water uh, the tide at high water in Tymouth okay so it's four meter high water one meter low water so that can be either end of our line and then we've got a high water time for Tymouth which has been adjusted from the Plymouth time and plus or minus five hours either side and so we have our tidal curve for time math based on the tidal characteristics of the standard port, which is Plymouth. Okay, so hopefully that all made sense to you. It's quite straightforward, really. A lot of the time, the interpolation can be done in your head. Certainly, if you've got an, an eye for maths, you can sometimes do the interpolation in your head. It's just a matter of averaging out and seeing what the difference is. But if you're not sure and you want to get it more accurate, then just draw out your little x and y axis, about 30 degree difference between x and y. Make sure you start with the figures, the right figures at one end and go the other way to the right figures at the other and then connect those two figures and then use the scale, the gradient, to interpolate for whatever time you or depth you want uh, on that scale. Okay, so uh, hopefully that's useful. If you've got any questions, then please do pop them in the uh, in the section below. I'd be happy to try and answer them for you, and um, and uh, hope to speak to you again soon. Cheers. I hope you found this short video tutorial useful. If you did, please click the like button. This helps promote the video on YouTube. If you've got any of your own tips or experience you'd like to share, or you've got an idea for a video, let me know in the comments section below. And if you aren't already a subscriber, consider subscribing and remember to click the little bell so you're notified when I release my next video. There are various links that might interest you in the description section under this video. Until next time, sell safe.